Hey guys, it's me. I just finished reading Waterfall, and this is by Lisa T. Bergen. Bergen, I think it's how it's pronounced. Um, I'm gonna get this book. Oh, I don't know. 4.5 out of 5 stars. Like, I can't just quite give it a 5 out of 5 stars, but it definitely is not a 4 out of 5 stars. It's it's a really good book. I really enjoyed it. Um, I really like the characters, and I really want book two. I just, like, put this down, and I was like, I want book two. Mm, so I'm gonna have to order it on Amazon or find it somewhere, but I definitely did enjoy this book a lot, and it's such a great, like, historical fiction. I've been getting really into historical fictions this year, and I am in for it. I am ready. Um, it's, like, a so I'm gonna get on with the rest of the review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye. Hey guys, it's me Jessica and today I'm doing a review for Waterfall by Lisa T. Bregan. Bregan? I think that's how that's being pronounced. So that's how I'm gonna say it. Um, this book I'm giving 4 out of 4 stars, I think, 4 out of 5 stars, what am I saying? 4 out of 5 stars or 4.5 out of 5 stars. And so I really, really enjoyed this book a lot and I'm excited right, yeah. to review it. So this book, the main character, uh, the main character's name is Gabriella and she has a sister named Evangeline and um, their mother is an archaeologist who is looking for Etruscan ruins and they end up finding some Etruscan ruins kind of within the first chapter. And so the sister, uh, so Gabrielle and her sister go into the tomb when they're not supposed to and they find these handprints that perfectly fit both of their hands. And so when they both put their hands on these like handprints on the wall, they are transported back in time into, I believe, the 14th century. And they're in Italy, by the way. And it's absolutely fantastic, and I love this book. Um, but I really did enjoy this book. I liked how historically accurate it was. I mean, there are a couple of things which she notes in the back, which I was very thankful that they were noted in the back. But anyway, I really enjoyed the main character and all the other characters in there. Her sister, um, what's his name? Wow, Luca, and I think it's Marcello. Yeah, Marcello, and then Marcello's brother, uh, Fortino, Fortino, yeah, he's a great character. I haven't read this in a long time, but I really did enjoy this book, and I think there's just a couple of things that I wished was different that I would have been happy about, but we can't have, we can't have everything, you know? So I'm gonna get into spoilers now, so here we go. I think one of my main issues was Gabrielle. Like, I love her. She's such a great character, but there's some things that she did that I was not very happy with. And, you know, that's, like, that's an okay thing. Like, that happens a lot and stuff. But it's just, yeah, mm-hmm, that was it. I can't really think of any instances that she annoyed me at the moment, but I know there were some. Like, she does have a really great character, and I like how she has to speak in a certain way because it's the 14th century, and then she thinks in a very modern way, which I like, because she's just, she'll talk to Marcelo, she's like, we cannot, we cannot be, and then she's like, yeah, you need to get out of here, go away, and that's what she's thinking, and I, I really did like that kind of... It was like we had this great kind of historical monologue and then we had like, um, no, historical dialogue and then the kind of inner thoughts were very modern and I feel like that endears the readers to the characters and I really like that. Um, I don't know why I'm looking at this through a, um, a writer eye, but I am. And then one thing I really, really enjoyed is kind of the build-up to Marcello and Gabrielle's relationship. Like, he is immediately kind of, he's suspicious of her, and she's just like, oh my god, this dude's hot. And then she's just trying to fit in and find a way, and she's just being herself, and Marcello thinks she's really beautiful and really strong based on how she is as herself. I really enjoyed that, and I think it's a really great message. Um, one thing that I like that 
um, Gabrielle noted on when Marcelo professes his love. Like, they've known each other a week, and he's like, I love you. And she's like, dude, calm down. We've met for, like, a week. But in her head, like, she says it in her head, but, like, she can't really express that because at the time, in the 14th century, love was just, like, this real quick thing, and everyone got married like that. I don't know. That's how I imagine it goes. Um... Yeah, so I want to talk about, so there's this one, th okay, one thing that irritates me, and I don't know why it does, but it does. Uh, so when Gabrielle first shows up in the past, um, they comment on her clothes, and then um, Marcella was like, go get some clothes from Sicily. And Luca's like, I'll have to buy her a new set, or Marcella says that he'll buy her some new clothes, and whatever. So they go get her some clothes from this girl named Sicily, and then we never, ever encounter this woman. Ever. And I, like, it annoys me a little bit that, like, we didn't encounter her at all because, it, like, they, her, she's name dropped, but she's, she doesn't show up at all within the book. So I don't know if she's going to be in the next book or not, but a part of me hopes she is because I'm a little disappointed that they just, like, she, like, the, she brought this character in and then never followed through because that's not Lady Rossi's name. It's Romana. So... The, like, you could have made Lady Rossi Cicely Rossi, and I would have been okay with it, but like, no, it, I don't know why that just bugs me, but it does. Oh my goodness. Let's talk about Lady Rossi, because this is, that woman is a total B-I-T-C-H, because like, she poisoned, she, don't even tell me she didn't, she poisoned Gabriella. Like, she was the one that told the doctor to put the arsenic in the medicine and give it to her. Like, there is, without a doubt in my mind, what happened. And then Lady Rossi can't be touched because her dad is part of the nine of Sienna, so it's like, she can't be touched. And, um, I don't know what Marcelo's gonna do. I, that's why I really want to know the next, the, see the next, because I want to know how um, Gabriella and Evangeline go back in time again, and I want to know what happens, and I want to know what Marcelo does to find, like, the person that hurt Gabriella. So that's what I want to see. One thing that I really liked about this book was, um, Lord Fontino's sickness, because it's just allergies, but y you think about it, and they, they, the people in that time didn't know that kind of stuff. Like, people didn't understand what that meant and how to, like, treat it. So there was, like, if you have asthma, it's just, like, how are you really supposed to, like, live with you have asthma in the 14th century where no one, where the word asthma isn't even invented? Like, how is that? So I thought, like, Gabriella helping him kind of be like, you need to get rid of everything that's got, like, pollen or hay or anything on it. You need to get out of your room, and we need to wash the whole thing. And I really liked that that, that was there. I just thought that was a great way to introduce the world and how, like, and kind of introduce this bond between, um, kind of Fontino and through that Marcello as well with Gabrielle. I really enjoyed that because, because... Gabriella made him better, made him, made Lord Fontino feel better, and for that, Marcello was very grateful and, like, very, like, sp sped their relationship along, which I enjoyed. Luca. I really like Luca a lot. I feel like Luca is a very... He's just such a great character. He's such a great guy. Like, Marcello's a great guy, and Luca is... They're, they're great guys, and I really liked watching their kind of brotherhood. Like, they're not brothers, but they're brothers. And I liked watching him try and help um, Gabriella, not only because he likes her, but because of Marcello, because he knows that Marcello has feelings for Gabriella, and even though it's wrong for him to have these feelings, Marcello is helping both of them out, and I really, I really like that. I just, I like that kind of bromance going on between Luca and Marcello, and I, I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> um, I, I'm excited to see Evangeline and Luca's um, relationship further because I feel like that's going to be so exciting because they, they're they both very sweet people and I'm excited to see their relationship. I'm just, I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to see how when Evangeline and Gabrielle go back in time, how Luca and Marcello have like 
kind of reacted to them traveling through time. Like, I wonder if they're going to ask a bunch of questions. I wonder if they're going to be very curious about anything in the future. And I'm, I'm like, I wonder about these things because I like, I really need to get my hands on the next book. Like, that's all I've been thinking about. And like, I've been rereading my like favorite parts in this book. And I'm just excited to see what happens when they go back in time. Like, I'm excited to see. Oh my god. Okay. Um, one thing, I guess one of my favorite scenes is the part where Luca teaches Gabrielle to dance when they're in Siena because Marcello shows up and Marcello and Gabrielle dance and um like Luca's like whatever my lord desires he gets and, and then she looks at Mar uh, Marcello and she's like is this what you desire and he's like for tonight it is and I'm like ah, my heart is so beautiful I love I love them I think they're just they're, I love them so one thing that irritated me was they hail Gabriella as this like w woman warrior, you know, like a, like a, I was going to say an Amazon, but they don't know what Amazons are, um, but as like a warrior. And the thing is, she doesn't actually, she's not that great with a sword, just saying, like she was great with a short sword. And then she gets this long sword from Fontino and she uses that. I'm like, girl, why not just stick to the short sword? Cause you were really good with that. Um, so, I mean, I just like, like she didn't have a good weapon with her. And I'm like, she would have done better if she, she had like a knife or she had like a, a short sword because that's close to a, a fencing sword, I guess, or something. I mean, just with her, like her size. I guess because she, she's taller than other women. But anyway, um, yeah, that's just her. They like hail her as this, as this woman warrior and then she doesn't do, do so well in combat um, in the, the times that she's actually in combat. So there's that. <laughs> So I guess that is the end of my review for Waterfall by Lisa T. Bregan. Yeah, if you like this review, please like it and comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and ring that bell as well. It's very important that you do that so then you know when I get my videos. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I post mostly on Tuesdays and sometimes on Fridays if I remember. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.